and leave messages for somebody that we really care about. And we also know what it's like when we leave more than one message for that person and that same person that we care about doesn't call us back. We also think of an image of a parent who waits for her child at dinner time at a restaurant and the child never shows up. Well, whether it's a telephone call or a parent who waits for a child who doesn't show up, these images can be applied to our relationship with Jesus. God invites, is patient, and calls us. But sometimes we don't pick up the phone and we don't reply. We let them leave the message and that's it. But ultimately, at the end of the day, our hearts, our response, is either with God or our hearts are sadly away from God. This response back to God's invitation and his call is called faith. Faith is where you and I can encounter God on a very intimate level. It is impossible to please God without the response of faith. So when you think about the telephone call or the parent who doesn't get a response, think about our relationship with God. So let me ask you this morning, brothers and sisters, where is your heart in relation to God this morning? How is your faith in God doing? In today's gospel, the Canaanite woman had great faith. She continues to engage conversation with Jesus. And for our modern ears, the conversation with Jesus can seem strong in tone. But Jesus is making a point here. He is showing that everyone, not just a chosen few, is called to faith. The responsorial psalm reflects this universal call to faith. Everyone is called to faith. It is written in Psalm 67, O oh God, let all the nations praise you. This actually is one of my favorite psalms. O oh God, let all the nations praise you. And Jesus eventually says to her, O oh woman, great is your faith. Let it be done as you wish. And like the example of the telephone call or the parent, faith involves both one's heart and the will and one's intellect in responding to God's loving invitation. The whole person replies in love. Compared to the telephone call or the parent who got a poor response from her, her child, the Canaanite woman is the total opposite of this. She has great faith. She persists in her faith, even with all the difficulties. It said, 1,000 difficulties do not make one doubt, according to blessed John Henry Cardinal Newman, the great English convert to the Catholic faith. 1,000 difficulties do not make one doubt. Difficulties are sure to come in your life and in my life, but it doesn't mean that we don't believe. Also, I understand that the Holy Father, Pope Francis, recently visited the Vatican cafeteria, and I think he had uh, fish and chips that afternoon. And one of the things that I saw was this really cute picture of Pope Francis holding his tray with his fish and chips. And he said, this is the only acceptable form of a cafeteria Catholic. And it was a cute way of saying faith involves the totality of the Christian faith as it has been handed on to us from the time of the apostles and in the teachings of our holy church. Faith doesn't mean just picking one or two things, brothers and sisters. It means the totality of the Catholic faith. 
it, like in the story of uh, the, the parents or the telephone call, we must also make a free act of our faith, our will. Our response to God's love is free. The second major point is the universal call to holiness. I focused on each one of us and our own individual faiths. But here, we're going to focus on all nations are called to faith in God. In fact, this was one of the major themes that was consistent throughout the readings this morning, that faith is meant for everybody. It's not meant to just be a private matter. It's meant to be shared in the public, out there in the world. In the first reading, it is the foreigner, not the Jew, who loves the name of the Lord and becomes his servants. The foreigners who join themselves to the Lord, ministering to him, loving the name of the Lord and becoming his servants. In the second reading, St. Paul describes himself as the apostle to the Gentiles. A Gentile is a non-Jew. And this second reading shows that faith is meant even for non-Jews, everybody. Thus, faith, the call to faith, is universal, not specific to one nation or one group of people. This means that we, the Bride of Christ, the Church, are called to spread faith in God, brothers and sisters. There's a term for this. It's called evangelization. Evangelization. And evangelization is where we share God with others. We are deliberate about it. Pope Paul VI said, the church exists for evangelization. Pope Paul also wrote that the modern world listens to witnesses, witnesses before they listen to teachers. And if they do listen to teachers, it's because they are witnesses. Our faith can grow by living our holy Christian faith. And yes, I, I, I admit, it's difficult to talk about God in the public. Or perhaps it's difficult to pray even in one's family or do something related uh, to church together. Yeah, it can be difficult. But like the Canaanite woman, a thousand difficulties in our families don't make one doubt. Pope Francis wrote in his first encyclical, Light of Faith, in the family, faith accompanies every age of life, beginning with childhood. Children learn to trust in the love of their parents. This is why it's so important that within their families, parents encourage shared expressions of faith, which can help their children to grow. The church is a holy mother who must teach us to speak the language of faith. The purpose of the church is to spread the name of Jesus Christ all over the world. Let all the nations praise you. This call to faith is universal. And the word universal in Greek is Catholic, katholikos. The church is universal and Catholic. St. Ignatius of Antioch in the, around the year 100 said, where Jesus Christ is, there is the Catholic church. It is our call, brothers and sisters, to spread faith. But here's the catch. We cannot spread faith in God if we ourselves are not converted, if we don't have that passionate engagement, the way two people are in love with each other, with God. This relationship must be strengthened, and this relationship is strengthened especially in the seven sacraments of the Holy Church, in Eucharist and reconciliation or confession. These two sacraments can be received over and over again to strengthen our faith. Conversion happens daily. And many of us know people who have left the church, or perhaps we ourselves need to be strengthened to practice our faith. I used the word evangelization earlier, but there's also another term used by the church called the new evangelization. And the new evangelization here is directed at Catholics who have left the church. It doesn't mean necessarily like being new in methods or new, new, using new media even though that's part of it. The new evangelization means that we need to re-evangelize societies and nations and peoples 
that traditionally were Christian uh, but have left the faith. We need to remind them that the church is their home. It is the community, it is in the community of believers that Christ is encountered. It is in the Eucharist, especially at the altar of sacrifice and the table of the Lord, where we where we experience Jesus every day. Let them know, if you and I know people like this, brothers and sisters, let them know that something is missing. That we miss them. And they belong here at the Eucharist. The new evangelization also refers to practicing Catholics to deepen their faith in God. You know, Pope, Pope Emeritus Benedict XVI said that the new evangelization takes a step forward every time a Catholic goes to confession. We bring the world closer to God when we ourselves pray and have daily conversions every day, especially in the Eucharist. The great spiritual matter master, Father Garagru Lagrange, says that in one's spiritual life, if one is not advancing, then one is regressing. We must constantly nourish our faith. And so as I close, dear brothers and sisters, with that question, how is your faith doing? Think of personal prayer, holiness, love, practicing a fervent sacramental life and love of neighbor. These are ways for, which, for how we can measure our faith. To evangelize the world, to invite Catholics who have left the church or simply do not regularly practice their faith through Sunday Mass, we ourselves must be converted to Jesus Christ like the Canaanite woman. Let our response of faith be inflamed so that all nations may know that Christ is risen from the dead and come to faith in God. Like the Canaanite woman, let us have a strong faith so that all nations may believe in, his, in God and his only Son, who he has sent into the world. O oh God, let all the nations praise you.